Call it noon once again, ladies and gentlemen. The Philadelphia Big Five presents the second game of this afternoon's doubleheader, an Atlantic 10 conference game featuring the Rutgers University Scarlet Knights and the Temple University Owls. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for Rutgers University at a forward position, a junior, six feet, nine inches tall, from Warren, New Jersey, number 12, Chris Remley. A freshman, six feet, seven inches tall, from an Alapan, New Jersey, number 20, Ed Zucker. At the center position, a junior, six feet, eight inches tall, from Goldsboro, North Carolina, number 44, Andre Bell. At the guards, a junior, six feet, two inches tall, from Trenton, New Jersey, number 22, Sam Randolph. At the other guard, a junior, six feet, one inch, from West Seat Pleasant, Maryland, number 24, Brian Ellerby. And the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Tom Young. And for the Temple University Owls. forward position, a senior, six feet, four inches tall, from Collingdale, Pennsylvania, number 15, Jim McLaughlin. At the other forward, a junior, six feet, eight inches tall, from Clayton, New Jersey, number 30, Granger Hall. The center spot, a senior, six feet, nine inches tall, from Port of Spain, Trinidad, number 24, Colin McNish. At the guards, a sophomore, six feet, three inches tall, from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, number four, Ed Coe. At the other guard, a senior, six feet, five inches tall, from Wilmington, Delaware, number 43, Terrence Stansbury. And the head coach, of the Temple University Owls, John Cheney. The officials for this afternoon's second game, Lou Moser, Jim Huggard, and Art McDonald. All right, you have to talk about the guy who isn't here, and that is John Battle, number 10 for Rutgers. Temple beat Rutgers earlier this season, 77-68 at the Rutgers Athletic Center. Battle had 32 points in that ball game, shot 14 of 22 from the floor, averaging 32 points per game in four Atlantic 10 games, but last Monday night, no contact, but against Monmouth, his knee locked on him. He was injured. He'll be out for at least another couple of weeks. Rutgers without John Battle. So Temple beat Rutgers earlier this season when Battle had 32. Last year in the Atlantic 10 tournament, Temple defeated Rutgers 72-65. Temple on the verge, perhaps, of national recognition. Tom Young's ball club, not only the Battle injury, but illness. Ed Zucker will start, but he has a fever. Steve Perry will come off the bench despite a banged up knee. It could be a very long afternoon for Rutgers, but the Scarlet Knights have been able to hang in and play nothing but nail biters all season long against Atlantic 10 opponents. Tom Young has done a masterful job of coaching. He ran a clinic here against St. Joseph's a couple of weeks ago when the Scarlet Knights almost upset the high-flying Hawks. So here we go. We saw an outstanding guard in Steve Black earlier. Terrence Stansbury, number 43 for Temple. Another super backcourt player, perhaps one of the early NBA draft choices. He is a senior. Coe is number four. Stansbury, 43 from deep, is short. Inside, taking the ball is Andre Bell away from Colin McNish. And uh, Tom Young wanted a foul call on McNish. But instead, the jump ball situation, of course, alternate possession rule in college basketball. So it will be Rutgers ball. And you know what, Dan? We didn't see that once in the first game. But here we are with the tie-up situation, opening second. So let's set the players. Brian Ellerby, number 24 for Rutgers. Ed Zucker wears number 20. Sam Randolph is 22. Chris Remley is 12. And Andre Bell, you saw involved with Paul at the other end, is number 44. Temple coming out, plain zone. And the Owls have been a traditional zone team, and they play it very, very well since the days of Harry Litwack. Chris Remley won't go. Bell loses to Jim McLaughlin, who wears number 15. So it's McLaughlin, 15. Stansbury, 43. Ed Coe is number four. Granger Hall inside, 30. And Colin McNish wears number 24. McNish, Rutgers playing zone. 
Lachlan, good shooter inside Granger Hall. And before the shot, he traveled. Granger Hall out of Clayton, New Jersey, averaging 17 and a half per game. Coming off a knee injury, you see the heavily wrapped knee. Incredible that he is playing up to the uh, standards which he is playing to this season. Ray Moyer of the Temple Sports Medicine Center performed major knee reconstruction on that right leg of Granger Hall. We are 120 in, no score. This is an Atlantic 10 battle. Rutgers with it here against Temple. Sam Randolph out of Trenton, way short. Granger Hall with the rebound is outlet from McLaughlin. McLaughlin is Stansbury. He's open from 13, his second miss. Zucker on the board. We're 135 in and we're scoreless. Temple upset Rutgers in the Atlantic 10 championship championships before bowing to West Virginia in the final last year at the Spectrum. A semifinal victory for Temple, 72-65, and a tip-in by Remley won't go. Ball goes out of bounds. Play it the same way. Last touch by that man right there, Ed Coe of Temple. Ed Coe, a 6'3 sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Brian Ellerby, the trigger man. And this is Randolph. Randolph in the starting lineup because John Battle is out with the knee injury. Coe jumps out at Ellerby. Got a pitcher's duel going. No score. Randolph inside to Bell. Back out Ellerby. Partially blocked by Coe. And a foul call inside is going to go against Colin McNish. Temple coached by John Cheney in his second year after spending 10 years at Cheney State. Different spelling. Outstanding coach. There's Coe getting a piece of that shot. And eventually the foul. Cheney won a national title at Cheney State in Division II. Randolph straight away, his second attempt short again. And McNish loses, but it is Temple basketball. A little McLaughlin. pressure by the, the Knights bill coming up. McLaughlin will inbound against the Scarlet Knights pressure. Terrence Stansbury, good open floor player at 6'5". Rated as one of the best big guards coming out of this 1984 senior class. He was the scoring leader in the Atlantic 10 last year and the MVP in the playoffs. McLaughlin, Stansbury goes down low to McNish. He has trouble. Finally holds on. Here's McLaughlin. Gets to the foul line. His shot won't go. McNish and Remley on the boards for Rutgers. Here is Ellerby. Got Randolph ahead left side. Ellerby cuts to the right side. Batted away by Stansbury. Bryan's pass inside for Zucker. Zucker way off trying to go up over Granger Hall. Hey, we're three minutes and ten seconds in. It is goose eggs. McLaughlin's pass for Granger Hall. And the weak side help knocked it out of bounds. One of two things there. Either Hall was going to go up and try to jam or dish to McNish, who was wide open. But Ellerby quickly coming back and watch his defensive play. Definitely taking a basket away from Temple right here as Ellerby knocked it out of bounds. Hall would have stuffed that if he could. And he will dunk one two-handed in the lay before this game is out. Steve Perry, number 54, checks in for Rutgers. Ed Zucker with the fever goes to the bench. Tom Young's club battles hurt. Perry's playing with a banged up knee. Zucker came up ill today. And finally, Ed Coe puts points on the board with a long jumper. And here's the streamer show at the Palestra. The traditional streamer show, 16-32 left. First half, it is 2-0 Temple as Ed Coe found nothing but net from deep. One thing Tom Young has been able to accomplish this year, Bill, is get a lot of experience. Uh, six freshmen have played in at least nine games each. Rutgers still hasn't scored. Eller Peter Randolph. run it down right in front of us. He ran that down just before you caught it, Bill. Five great hands. Bell doesn't. He loses to Granger Hall, but Hall travels. On that particular play, Bell did not have the great hands. There's John Cheney in his second year at Temple. His club 11-2, 6-0 in the Atlantic 10. You know, John was an outstanding player. He was one time the most valuable player in the Eastern League. 
Steve Perry gets Rutgers on the board. The 6'6 junior from Woodbridge, Virginia, a transfer out of George Washington. You see the Atlantic 10 banner behind Tom Young, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference banner behind Tom Young. Earlier we had a MAC game, Holy Cross beating LaSalle, this Atlantic 10 action, and it's 2-2, four minutes in, Temple and Rutgers. Ed Coe, back to Terrence Stansbury, and Jim McLaughlin, he wears number 15. Jim McLaughlin, jump pass for Stansbury. Third shot for Terrence Stansbury, his first field goal. Straightaway jumper. Both of those long-range field goals for Temple would have counted for three points each a year ago. They came from outside that three-point perimeter, which, of course, this year there is a shot clock, but no three-point play in Atlantic 10 conference play. Inside of Perry, he loses out of bounds. A 45-second shot clock in the Atlantic 10 gets shut off final four minutes of the ball game. It really is not a factor too often. 45 seconds is a lot of time. Stansbury to McNish. McNish along the baseline. Back out to Stansbury. Ed Coe partially blocked. Brian Ellerby got a hand on it. Ellerby from Randolph. McLaughlin trying to set the position, but Ellerby stopping and firing over Jim McLaughlin. We are tied at four. Lachlan, jump pass for McNish, gets around Bell and then loses. Bell comes up in his outlet for Ellerby and jumping in is Jim McLaughlin. Unless they called walking. Got to travel, before. I believe. McLaughlin jumped in. There's the contact. Had no traveling occurred, it certainly would have been a blocking foul on McLaughlin. 4-4, 4, 14-30 left, first half. Bell jumping out at McLaughlin. McNish back to McLaughlin. Stansbury up and a foul on Ellerby. Basket would have counted. Nate Blackwell, number three, a freshman at 6-4 from Philadelphia, checks in, replacing Ed Coe. This is what leaping ability will do for you. Now he's fouled, but he's going to force it up anyway and maybe hope that he can throw it in there. Stansbury will get two foul shots. Nate Blackwell, the freshman from South Philadelphia High School, has come into the game for the Owls, replacing Ed Coe. Stansbury, a 79% free throw shooter. Number 34, Charles Rain. He's going to come in for Temple. Colin McNish leaves. Chris Remley leaves for Rutgers. Ed Zucker checking back in for the Scarlet Knights. Darren Campbell, a freshman at 6'5 from Washington, D.C., will come on for Rutgers, replacing Sam Randolph. So both Tom Young and John Chaney going to their benches. Expect to see Zucker in and out this afternoon. He'll play for a few minutes and then get a blow because, again, he came up with some temperature this morning. Tom Young concerned about him, said he will play, but he'll want to rest him. Here's a rarity afternoon. Stansbury missing two, huh? As I mentioned, 79% free throw shooter. It is 4-4. 14.05 to play. Brian Ellerby trying to give Rutgers its first lead way off. Paul has it knocked out of bounds by Bell, and it will be Temple Ball. And again, Rutgers will show the pressure. Bill, it's just incredible how uh, Paul has responded to that major knee surgery. And one thing he did uh, while his knee was injured was he worked a lot on the weights, and his upper body strength has dramatically increased. I recall at the Big Five dinner back in November, John Chaney didn't know if Granger Hall would be able to give him anything this season, and uh, he is averaging 17.5 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game. Lane violation on Temple. Got a three-second call. And that's something we did not see at all in the first game either. It's 13.40 mark of the first half. It is 4-4. Temple and Rutgers, we have a timeout. We'll be back. Tom Young mapping the strategy. 13 minutes and 40 seconds left first half. 
there, a look at the Atlantic 10 standings. The Temple Owls on top with a 6-0 record. Rutgers, after losing two straight overtime games and a three-pointer at Duquesne, down there near the bottom at 2-4. Temple and St. Joseph's, both members of Philadelphia's Big Five, leading the pack. You know, George Washington and St. Joseph's are playing today, and uh, George Washington was leading St. Joseph's. How about that St. Joseph's UMass game right here at the Palestra the other night? John Hempel out of uh, Union, New Jersey, hit a shot from, uh, you know, greater, greater Boston, right, to send it into uh, second overtime. And uh, St. Joe's went to the line, one and one, no time left on the clock, down by one, hit them both, and uh, they got a narrow victory. So Atlantic 10, like most leagues, uh, one of those on any given night leagues, right? Yeah. Bottom clubs can be top clubs. Bill, the Hawks were losing those kind of games last year. This year, they're winning them. A mark of a good club. Here is Stansbury. McLaughlin. And away from the ball, got the foul call on Granger Hall. Kevin Springman uh, making those two big fouls the other night with no time remaining on the clock. You know, Kevin's only a 60% foul shooter. And he didn't hit anything but net on both of them. And, you know, if he missed the first one, Bill, the Hawks lose. They missed the second one, they go into overtime. I think Ron Gerlofson, the UMass coach, was also from New Jersey. Campbell's missed. Manalapan was a little upset. The and that foul move. call was made. Rain! Got it. Charles Rain. And we'll see St. Joe's later this season against the ball. It was double overtime as it was. The Springer missed the second foul. They would have gone into a third overtime. All right, right here it is 6-4. Temple over Rutgers. 12-43 left first half. Steve Perry outside. This is Brian Ellerby. Ellerby now in the backcourt with Darren Campbell, Harry Bell, and Zucker up front for the Scarlet Knights. Campbell. What are you doing here? You add Lloyd Moore to this group next year. Well, at halftime, you'll hear lots about Lloyd Moore. We're talking about the Scarlet Knights, and uh, Bill does a special feature with a guy that's transferred from Marquette and uh, going to really uh, add to the Rutgers team next year. Blackwell to McLaughlin. McLaughlin hesitates and fires from way outside. Campbell way up. Freshman at 6'5". Here's Ellerby. Bounce pass to Perry. Perry gets baseline against McLaughlin. Jump pass for Campbell. He tries to go inside for Zucker. Stansbury comes up with it. So the Scarlet Knights with some good ball movement, perhaps one pass too many. They turn it over. McLaughlin jump pass for Stansbury. And he's got Blackwell open. Nate hesitates and returns to Terrence Stansbury. Stansbury draws the foul. And Perry and Bell there defensively. Sam Randolph will check back in for Rutgers. Chris Remley's going to come back in. Ryan Ellerby sits down, and Steve Perry sits down. Bill, this jump shot by Stansbury was not unlike a shot from the right side on the baseline that he took against Dayton and missed at the buzzer when Temple lost on Tuesday night to the Flyers from Dayton, Ohio, 663-62. Stansbury, after missing two earlier in this first half, foul on Steve Perry, his first. Stansbury makes the first. He has three points. He'll be in the NBA next year. John Chaney calls him an outstanding open floor player. 8-6 Temple. Neither team able to really establish anything yet in this first half. Bramley to Zucker. Andre Bell, double team, gets it out to Campbell. He's shooting with confidence. That one in and out. Bell on the boards. Andre Bell, his first field goal. He has two. Rain forced Bell to change the trajectory on his shot, but Andre still made it. Eight, eight. Stansbury, pretty from the baseline. He has six of the ten Temple points. That's the one that he missed against Dayton as the clock ran out the other night. Nothing but close games for Temple. 
One point loss to Dayton and a 62-61 win over Rhode Island Thursday night. And Rhode Island missed the last second shot in that game. Rockwell knocks it out of bounds. Remley looking inside for Bell. That official holding the ball is Jim Huggard, a member of the Big Five Hall of Fame. He started Villanova. Campbell and Randolph in the Scarlet Knight backcourt. Zucker, Remley, and Bell up front. McLaughlin, Blackwell, Green, Stansbury, and Hall on the floor for Temple. Sam Randolph runs down the long rebound, but Darren Campbell got caught up in the air underneath. And we have a a whistle. Our 54 Steve Curry returns to the Rutgers lineup. He replaces his sucker. Steve Curry is a 6'6 junior from Woodbridge, Virginia. Darren Campbell, who will leave, Brian Orby checks back in, committing the foul. First on Campbell, third team foul against Rutgers. Blackwell inbounds to Hall. And Granger Hall goes back to Nate Blackwell. Well, Bill, we're halfway through the first 20 minutes, and Temple and Rutgers locked in a low-scoring game. 10-8, Owls over the Scarlet Knights. Ranger Hall looking for his first points, long on the jumper, Bell with the rebound, and here is Ellerby. Perry's pass over Bell's head. Blackwell got McLaughlin over Randolph. Jim McLaughlin, his first field goal. He has two, 12-8. Temple leads it. 9.25 left first half. Bill, you pointed out that Granger Hall has yet to score for Temple. He is the Owls' leading scorer, averaging 17 and a half points a game. Rutgers turns it over on the travel. Blackwell to Stansbury, and back to Blackwell. Temple with its largest lead, a four-point lead, a 12-8, 9.05 to play first half. Temple's a difficult team to press, Bill. They have very good ball handlers and quick ones in Stansbury and Blackwell and Ed Coe. Coe not on the floor right now, Jimmy Blackwell out there. Blackwell, a great shooter. Double team, triple team, back out to Blackwell. His shot is way off Remley with the rebound. Nate's a pretty good marksman as well. You don't see him miss by that much too many times. Like you don't see anybody miss by that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Perry open from 13 feet. Steve Perry is second field goal. He has four at his 12-10. 8-10 to play. Stansbury right in front of us. Back to Blackwell. McLaughlin around Ellerby is bounce pass inside for Rain, and we have a foul call away. Not three seconds. Again, that's the second three-second call against Temple. Ranger Hall in the paint. Darren Campbell reports back in for Rutgers. Sam Randolph leaves. Ed Zucker is back for the Scarlet Knights. Official scorer's table right in front of us, and Zucker did look a little flush as he checked in. So again, he has uh, he's ill, and he will not play for long stretches this afternoon. The pass to Zucker. That was a long stretch. <laughs> he had 20 points Thursday night at Duquesne, his career high. Only a freshman, 6'7 from Manalapan. There is Remley, who had 15 the other night. Rutgers getting production from their front court. But Chris's miss goes out of bounds, and it's Temple Ball. <laughs> Rutgers' front line against Duquesne shot 17 of 23 from the floor Thursday night. The winning team in this game might not reach 50. Charles Green. Junior from Frankfort, Delaware, going up strong. It's 14-10 Temple. Rain 
with the steal as Campbell went inside for Remley and Temple fall. We have three officials working this ball game at being an Atlantic 10 matchup and we have a timeout with seven minutes and one second left in the first half. We have a final score, Notre Dame 81 and Villanova 68. Notre Dame 81, Villanova 68 this afternoon, a final. Right here at his 14-10 Temple, leading Rutgers. In Philadelphia Big Five action next Saturday, we have an afternoon and evening doubleheader, and there are separate admissions for each. Now, next Saturday afternoon, beginning at 1 o'clock, Temple plays West Virginia in an Atlantic 10 conference game, followed by, at 3 o'clock, a MAC game between LaSalle and Fordham. It's also Pennsylvania Bank Lisa Day next Saturday afternoon. The next Saturday night at 6 o'clock, the Penn Princeton women. And at 8 o'clock, the Ivy League Classic, Penn and Princeton men. The first 500 fans in attendance and next Saturday afternoon's doubleheader, Temple West Virginia LaSalle Fordham, 14 years of age and younger, receive an athletic gym bag courtesy of First Pennsylvania Bank Lisa. Then, how about this offer? A half-price offer for next Saturday night. If you keep your ticket stub to the afternoon doubleheader, you can present that at the Palestra box office next Saturday night and buy any price ticket at 50% off. Now, you want to get advance tickets, tickets to all Philadelphia Big Five games at the Palestra and Spectrum are on sale daily at the Franklin Field ticket office Monday to Friday from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to noon. This right. is a great defensive play by Rainville. Ball going into Remley from Darren Campbell and Charles Rain hustling. It is Temple's ball. Owls with the four-point lead. Blackwell to Rain and back to Blackwell. And it's Jim McLaughlin with some space. Brings it across. Aguilar in there for the Owls. And, Number 31. Uh, McLaughlin's miss. And it's Bell on the boards. Andre Bell doing a nice job on the boards for Rutgers. Ellerby stops, pops, and it drops. Brian Ellerby, his second field goal. He has four. It is 14-12. Bill, I wanted to say about Aguilar that with uh, Granger Hall and foul difficulty last Saturday afternoon in Washington, Aguilar got eight big rebounds to lead the Owls over George Washington. Pete from the Bronx, the senior. It's tough to win on the road. Stansbury. Got it. Aaron Stansbury. He now has eight points. Lifetime here at the Western Rutgers and Temple are 2 2. They have a good athletic rivalry, as many of you fans know. They meet each year in football. Rutgers leads all time the series 9 5. Perry's miss rain on the boards. So here are the Owls with the opportunity to take its largest lead. They're up by four. McLaughlin with it. Eric Riggins, freshman, waiting to check in for Rutgers. Stansbury off last one. Cole Randolph got Ellerby left side. Kind of run out of there. And now Sam picks it. And it goes out of bounds. Rutgers turns it over. If he were a freshman, that would be called a freshman mistake. And Sam Randolph is a junior. Speaking of freshmen, Eric Riggins wears 0-0 out of Passaic, played his high school ball at Passaic Tech. Rutgers really didn't have a break going. That's what I meant. There was no need for him to rush the ball up the floor like that. And Rutgers gets a break as Temple throws up an air ball and it'll be Scarlet Knight ball. Darren Campbell's going to come in, and Tom Young's going to probably tell Sam Randolph all about it as Randolph goes to the bench. That was Nate Blackwell with another air ball. As Nate you said, you don't see anybody miss by that much. He's done it twice. You know, I used to do that a lot, but I always would say that I was throwing it up there for the guy under the basket. Stansbury. Count the basket. Ellerby the foul as Darren Campbell is the player who came in for Randolph. Campbell turned it over. And Stansbury goes the length of the floor. He'll go to the line and try to complete the three-point play. You see Campbell. Poor pass. You know, he's so good. He jumps so high. He has the long arms. So agile in the air. He's hard to stop on a break like that. 
Hey, Rutgers has 12 points. Terrence Stansbury has 11 by himself. It's 19-12 out. 5.07 left first half. Remley. And Campbell. Remley looking for his first points, and he had 15 the other night. He's a shooter, a streak shooter. If he gets going, he can be tough. Here's Bell inside. Andre Bell, second. That was a nice catch. His second field goal, he has four. You know, Bill, we might want to point out again that uh, Rutgers is playing this game without battle, and he's their big offensive noise. Well, he went out. About eight minutes left against Monmouth last Monday night. No contact on the play. His knee just locked on him. Arthroscopic surgery performed on Tuesday. He'll be out two to three weeks. Rutgers went to Duquesne Thursday night. First ball game without battle and lost by three after having a one-point lead final minute. Wasn't he averaging something like 32 points a game at Atlantic 10 conference play? McLaughlin's miss. Riggins with the rebound. 32 in the four Atlantic 10 games, averaging just under 22 points per game overall. A junior who can really play. Now we're seeing Black. We're seeing Stansbury, outstanding guards. Uh, battle was here. You know, he is in that, that class, although he doesn't have the physical attributes of a Steve Black or a Terrence Stansbury. The battle's more like 6-2, 6-3. Right now, it looks like the Scarlet Knights might be hard-pressed to hit Battle's Atlantic 10 game average with having scored only 14 points with only 4 minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the first half. Remley out for Ellerby. Bounce pass for Campbell. Remley partially blocked by McLaughlin. And it's Blackwell on the boards. Aguilar back to Blackwell. We go under four minutes. Owls by five. Going up is Pete Aguilar, and he draws the foul. Ed Zucker back in for Rutgers. Bill Temple graduates Terrence Stansbury and Jim McLaughlin this year, but they have already recruited probably the top guard in the Delaware Valley area in uh, Howard Evans out of West Philadelphia High School. And they've got a 6'3 shooting guard out of Atlanta, Jerome Dowdle. Aguilar's miss. Remley to the bench as Zucker comes back in. Sam Randolph replacing Brian Ellerby. It was Ellerby who committed the foul, which put Pete Aguilar at the line. Second foul on Ellerby. 15 foul against Rutgers. Temple has committed only three. And Aguilar makes the second. 20 to 14. Temple leads it. Another top recruit that Temple has already garnered for next year is 6'8 Darren Pearsall from Chester High, the defending Pennsylvania State champs. Give Darren Campbell room and he'll hit the jumper. That's his second field goal from the outside. He has four points. Smooth shooting southpaw freshman out of Washington, D.C. Rutgers hanging in and it's 20 to 16. They've hung in against a lot of people. Stansbury. Bang. Rutgers came into this game with seven wins and seven losses. Temple, 11 wins, two losses. Riggins to Campbell. Randolph trying to penetrate his pass. The bell goes off his hands. Meanwhile, as Sam Randolph passed off, Charles Rain drew the offensive foul. Steve Perry back in for Rutgers. Eric Riggins sits down. Temple was switching up on the defense that time, Bill. A little man-to-man -man variation. Got to stay alert on that Rutgers bench, huh? Tom Young bringing him in and out. McLaughlin, 2.45 left. Tom Young getting the Rutgers team a lot of experience, and these kids are going to be uh, contributors in the next couple of years. McLaughlin turns it over. Here's Campbell and Blackwell hurrying back on defense. Create, commits the foul, non-shooting foul. Art McDonald from East Rutherford, New Jersey, makes the call, and you play referee. And here's the contact. They gave him the shoulder. Art McDonald will hand to Steve Perry. Randolph to Campbell. Two and a half to play first half. Got a foul away from the ball. I believe it's going to go against Rain. 
Now it's McLaughlin. Jim McLaughlin with the push. His first 15 foul on Temple. Chris Remley back for Rutgers, replacing Ed Zucker. So as we told you, Zucker with the fever playing at two or three minute stretches and then going out for a minute or two. And that's the third field goal for Steve Perry, and it's 22-18. Temple not able to open up any daylight. Stansbury rolls off Perry on the boards. Rutgers with a chance to get within two. Here's Remley. Goes back out for Campbell and Randall. Against the Temple Zone, Scarlet Knights. Less than two minutes to play in the first half. With a good shot, the close within two. Open. Won't go. McLaughlin on the board. McLaughlin, a good job uh, blocking off Steve Perry for the offensive board. Rutgers used about 25 seconds of the shot clock. Got a good shot, but Remley, who has struggled in the first half, wouldn't go down. Chris still looking for his first points. Here's what I mean by a 45-second clock is a lot of time. Temple still has 20 on the shot clock, so it really isn't a factor. McLaughlin rims the basket. Randolph with the rebound. Now in that first Temple Rutgers game, Scarlet Knights led it 34-32 at the half. Stansbury at 21. Rutgers was up 56-54 with 5.23 to play, but from there, Temple outscored Rutgers 23-12 to win 77-68. And uh, more than likely, we'll have a two, four, or six point ball game at the half here, and that's without John Battle. After our feature on Rutgers, Lloyd Moore will be in the program next year. Dan, you're going to have an opportunity to talk with Temple's AD, Gavin White. Well, Perry, Perry's giving McLaughlin a couple of shots. No Steve is an no aggressive foul. ball player. Can make things happen on defense. Here's Rain inside. Count the basket. the pass and a strong move by Charles Rain hanging in the air getting the basket and drawing a foul pass from Nate Blackwell, Blackwell. okay Rain rolls it in he has seven so uh, that four point lead becomes a seven point lead and Rutgers will hold for the final shot of the first half so that hurt the Scarlet Knight effort the three point play by Temple with just 25 seconds left in the first half Campbell to Randolph Campbell and we've got Blackwell committing the foul outside that's the sixth team foul against Temple non-shooting foul 11 seconds left first half when Nate Blackwell's done a good job as a freshman for these Owls. He has come in in some pretty tension-filled moments and played very productively. Kevin Clifton now in the game for the Owls and Ed Coe as well. Remwood won't go. Aguilar on the boards. I said it would be a two, four, maybe six point ball game at the half. It's a seven point. Temple lead as Charles Rain came up with that three point play late. So it is 25 to 18. Temple leads it. Temple paced by Terrence Stansbury, who has 13 points. Charles Rain, the second high scorer for the Owls with seven. And surprisingly, here, right here, it was Holy Cross over LaSalle, 85 74. LaSalle's four game winning streak snapped as Holy Cross won it. 23 points and 18 rebounds for Elsie. If you were with us, he had an outstanding ball game. Pat Elsie, Steve Black for LaSalle with 23, but Holy Cross beat LaSalle earlier. Right here, it's Temple over Rutgers by seven as we start the second half. Colin McNish took the inbounds pass and immediately traveled. John Cheney would prefer that Colin not handle the ball. And as we mentioned to you before we went away for our halftime features, the seven-point Temple lead, which they have right now, their largest lead of the ball game. We were close throughout the first half. Rutgers never led. Rutgers with Zucker, Ellerby, Randolph, Remley, and on.
Andre Bell on the floor, Stansberry, McLaughlin, Coe, Ranger Hall, and McNish on the floor for Temple. And again, Ranger Hall did not score in the first half. Here's Zucker. He's got it. Ed Zucker, his first field goal, he has two. Again, he's playing with a temperature. He's coming off a career-high 20 against Duquesne Thursday night. And Jim McLaughlin... And the call comes right in front of us for Martin McDonald's second consecutive Temple turnover. So Rutgers with a chance to get within three as they come up with the possession. Did the ball hit the line? I don't know. Well, Art was right on the line, and uh, he had a perfect vantage point. George Washington has defeated St. Joseph 76-68 this afternoon in an Atlantic 10 matchup. GW 1-4 in league going in. St. Joe's 4-1 in league going in. So uh, I don't know if you can call it an upset. GW was at home. Uh, GW is off to a slow start, but their personnel are about as good as anybody's in this league. Certainly, I think Temple, St. Joe's, and GW are probably the Atlantic 10 favorites. Chris Remley's missed Bell on the boards. Dribbles out of there and goes back out to Brian Ellerby. Gavin White said it will be interesting in March at tournament time because uh, you see bottom clubs beating the top clubs rather regularly in the Atlantic 10. And hardly anybody ever beats West Virginia down there at the Coliseum. They've struggled. Zucker's miss. West Virginia just 2-3 and three in league, 6-5 and five overall. Here's Stansberry to McLaughlin. His jump pass for Coe inside Granger Hall. Remley helping with the double team with Bell, and Zucker will run down the rebound. See Zucker keep McNish away from that offensive rebound. Good play by Ed Zucker. We're just about two minutes into the second half. Temple without a point in the second half. 25-20, Owls lead it. Randolph to Remley. wide open. He's got to make that shot and it won't go. Chris coming off the 15-point performance Thursday night at Duquesne and shot 0 of 7 in the first half and uh, right there he just did not have the confidence. He's a smooth shooter normally but just not shooting with confidence. You can see he was he's getting wide good open. shots. Foul call went against Andre Bell as the Remley miss. First team foul on Bell. First team foul in the second half against Rutgers. Here's Stansbury. Randolph knocked it away, but Stansbury regains. Got a foul away from the ball. It'll be number two on Bell as he was holding Ranger Hall. John Chaney. In his second year at Temple, his club perhaps on the verge of a national ranking with their outstanding 11-up, 2-down record, and they are 6-0 in the Atlantic 10. They have not been able to open up the distance against Rutgers this afternoon. Go. McLaughlin. Partially blocked from behind by Remley Hall as it knocked out of his hands, but the foul call on a very upset Ed Zucker. Zucker feeling he got all ball. Meanwhile, Granger Hall steps to the 15-foot line where he'll shoot two. And he's adjusting that knee brace again, Dan, uh, as we talked in the first half. Remarkable that he is playing and performing. He's an all-league performer as Perry replaces the struggling Chris Remley. And, you know, really, John Chaney didn't know if he'd give him anything this season. The fact that he's playing at all is remarkable. And the fact that he's leading the team in scoring and rebounding is just phenomenal. 17 and a half per game, just under eight rebounds per game. That his first point in this ball game. He's a 65% free throw shooter, just a junior. Ranger Hall from Clayton, New Jersey. You know, the guy that performed, uh, Dr. Ray Moyer, did the surgery on Ranger Hall, and I believe he just performed orthoscopic corrective knee surgery on one of the talented uh, young Rutgers women players from Boston. Sam Randolph, too hard off the glass. Zucker on the boards, and he was hammered inside, I believe, by Colin McNish. He had a foul call against McNish. Watch Zucker. Watch Zucker working hard on the offensive boards as Randolph too hard off class. Good work there. You saw McNish with the foul. 
Ellerby will inbound. Goes to Randolph. The second foul on McNish. First team foul against Temple in the second half. Out for Zucker. And again, that's a heady play. Zucker rejected by Granger Hall. Here's McLaughlin. Temple had solo when Zucker didn't come up with that ball. Meanwhile, Granger Hall will miss the shot as it is Helter Skelter. Ball finally out of bounds. And Art McDonald blows the whistle and says it is Rutgers basketball. What a sequence that was. It was either that or first down. Look at this. Ranger Hall swats it. All of that resulted in zero points at each end as both teams going up and down the floor. We have a stoppage of play as someone threw something out on the court. And less said about that, the better. 16.40 to play, Temple by 7, 27.20. That was Brent. Sam Randolph. Ellerby from deep. Got it. Brian Ellerby. His third field goal, first of the second half. Brian has six points. The 6 1 junior from West Seat Pleasant, Maryland. Owls by five. 27 22. Rutgers playing a 2 3 zone this half. Coe takes it to the baseline, out to McLaughlin. Back to Coe. Bell's doing a good job denying Granger Hall the ball inside. Rimming the basket is Ed Coe, and the foul will be on McNish reaching over Steve Perry's back. You know, Colin McNish never gives up. He committed a foul there, and at, po at times he's awkward, but he always tries. From Trinidad, Colin McNish, a 6'9 senior. Brian Ellerby brings it right at you. That was the third foul on McNish. Picked up two quickly. And uh, how about three quickly as Colin McNish is called away from the ball. Fouling Andre Bell. So that'll be number four on Colin McNish. And John Chaney will go to his bench and bring on Charles Rain, who played very well in the first half coming off the bench. Charles Rain, uh, also from Delaware. McNish, uh, originally from Trinidad, now makes his home in the Diamond State. Unfortunately, Delaware can't keep a lot of these players home. You know, the Blue Hens have a winning record this year, but a lot of their best players go out of state to play their college basketball. Rain came off the bench, played 14 minutes in the first half, scored seven points, shot three of three from the floor, and made his free throw. And the offensive foul on Randolph is Ed Coe drew the foul. Ed Coe drawing the offensive foul. Chris Bremley will come back to the Scarlet Knights, replacing Ed Zucker. Expect Zucker to sit for a minute or so and then go back in. 7-22. Already four team fouls on Rutgers in the second half. That was the third on Sam Randolph. And three team fouls against Temple, all on McNish. And we have yet to play five minutes of the second half. The team's piling up the fouls. Stansbury, scoreless thus far in the second half at 13 in the first half. Here's Rain. I believe Steve Perry got a piece of it. And Perry comes up with a loose ball, but his outlet over Sam Randolph's head and out of bounds. Here are the kinds of mistakes, Bill, a young team makes. And this Rutgers team is a very young one. Six freshmen seeing a lot of playing time for the Scarlet Knights. Five minutes of the second half. Rutgers has outscored Temple 4-2. to two. So, Dan, like the start of this game, both teams really not getting into their offense in the early going. So we have a foul call away from the ball, and it's against Granger Hall, his second fourth team foul against Temple. John Chaney uh, not at all thrilled with that call. And what has transpired thus far in the second half. This club has come out and they have not played well. Randolph and Ellerby, the guards. Curry up front with Bell and Remley. Here's Remley. Finally, Chris Remley. After eight straight misses, Chris Remley with the field goal. It's 27-24. Code to Stansbury and McLaughlin. Inside, it's Rain and Hall. Steve Perry. Number three, Dave Blackwell, returns to the Temple 
Nate Blackwell will check in for the Owls, replacing Ed Coe. Second foul on McLaughlin, fifth team foul on the Owls. We have a timeout on the floor as you watch Granger Hall make his first field goal of the ball game. It is 29-24 Temple with precisely 14 minutes to play in the ball game. We are at the Palestra. Earlier today, Holy Cross defeated LaSalle 85-74. Doubleheader college basketball afternoon on New Jersey Network. We'll be back with more right after this. Still 14 minutes to play in this one. Bill Perry and Dan Baker at the Western Philadelphia to get a look at Rutgers coach Tom Young. And coming up next Saturday, and there's John Shady Temple. It'll be Princeton and Penn. And we'll have it for you from the Palestra live at 8 on New Jersey Network. A week from Monday, we'll see an ECAC Metro game. LIU and FDU, Long Island University and Fairleigh Dickinson University. Well, with John Battle, Temple beat Rutgers up at Piscataway, 77-68, and Rutgers is hanging tough without Battle here, trailing by just five. And Remley, who made his last field goal, if he can find the range, because he has been getting good shots against this Temple zone, Scarlet Knights could pull a major surprise. Remley running the baseline. Krista Ellerby and Darren Campbell, who's checked in for Sam Randolph. Now it's Remley on the other side. And here's Remley. Won't go. Perry won't go. And Hall with the rebound. Hall is a tower of strength on the boards. Blackwell, the 6'4 freshman from Philadelphia. Aaron Stansbury. McLaughlin thought about it. Hall, Stansbury on the board. His first points of the second half. He has 15. Ed Zucker waiting to check in for Rutgers. It's 31 24. Seven-point lead for Temple, matching their largest lead in the ballgame. Perry, jump pass for Remley, back to Steve, and we have a call before the shot. The foul on Terrence Stansbury, no basket. Number 20, Ed Zucker returns to the lineup. Ed Zucker reporting in. Steve Perry. Sits down with six points on three field goals all in the first half. The second foul on Stansbury, but that is the sixth team foul against Temple on each subsequent foul now. Rutgers will shoot the one and one, still 12 and a half to play. Remley's pass for Bell, back out to Ellerby. Darren Campbell will try from 18 feet, rolls off. Tell you what, Charles Rain has played a fine ball game coming off the bench. Gets great position on the boards at both ends, Bill. On the jump pass, Stansberry to McLaughlin. Brian Ellerby was underneath, and he committed the foul. You know, Bill, last year in John Cheney's first year as the head basketball coach at Temple after a great career at Cheney State, he had to alter his whole strategy when uh, Granger Hall got hurt five games into the year. And uh, what a plus it is to have that big guy back from Clayton, New Jersey. Here is Granger Hall. Back out to Blackwell. It was the third foul on Brian Ellerby, and it was the 15th foul on Rutgers. Charles Rain. He has been a major factor. He has nine. Temple by nine, 33-24. Ellerby is fouled by Charles Rain, trying to make it happen at the defensive end. I think John Cheney is trying to quicken the tempo of this game and take advantage of his personnel superiority. Temple foul number 34, Charles Rain. Rain with the blocking foul. And this is his first personal foul. Brian Ellerby. Brian Ellerby is at the foul line. He'll shoot one and one. Brian's a 78% free throw shooter. Number 54, Steve Perry returns to the Rutgers lineup. Steve Perry for Andre Bell. Rutgers lost to 
St. Joseph's earlier this year at the Palestra in overtime, 60 to 59. Rutgers without a point now, two minutes and 40 seconds since Remley made that open shot against his own defense on the good ball movement. Looked like Rutgers was uh, starting to get into their offense at that point. They were down by three at 27-24. Since then, Temple has scored six straight points. Scarlet Knights in a drought, and Temple has called the timeout, and they have the nine-point lead. Temple, West Virginia. LaSalle, Fordham, next Saturday right here at the Palestra. That's going to be a great one. And we have an afternoon and an evening doubleheader for you, separate admissions to each. However, well, you saw Charles Rain commit a foul, but before that, nothing but net from the baseline. Charles Rain with nine points off the Temple bench, and it's Temple by nine at 33-24, 11-42 to play. And it was 27-24 with 14 and a half left. Rutgers pulled within three, but since then, Rutgers without a point, Temple with six straight points, and the Owls with possession of the basketball right here. We just told you Temple's next home appearance is next Saturday against West Virginia. This coming Thursday, the Owls go to Pittsburgh to play Duquesne. Give you the Scarlet Knights schedule. They are at the Athletic Center Thursday night against St. Bonaventure. Go to George Washington next Saturday then play at West Virginia before returning home for GW on Saturday, February 4th. Shut up, Joe! Tom Young does not agree. You can tell by the facial expression. Got a vocal fan behind us. Perhaps you heard him with a suggestion for Tom Young. Or, or I hope you didn't hear his <laughs> suggestion. Blackwell inside for Stansbury, and he couldn't get handle on the basketball, but the foul call is going to go against Rutgers. Now you think maybe Terrence was thinking showtime, he just didn't make the catch. What do you think? Well, he shot it on the way down. He was off balance. And he may have had visions of one of those alley-oop dunks that uh, LaSalle often works from Greenberg to Steve Black. By the way, you talk about the little guy. Rutgers playing without battle. It really takes a lot away from their offensive game. And in the upset in the first game today, when Holy Cross upended LaSalle, 85-74, LaSalle had to play most of the game without Chip Greenberg, who leads the team by far in assists with 74. I think the, the runner-up is 24. Uh, Chip, uh, I don't believe, had any points and had no assists right. today. Andre Bell sits down. Excuse me, Andre Bell checks in. Chris Remley sits down. It was the second foul on Remley, putting Stansbury at the line. Stansbury's miss. You know, Greenberg had what is troubling uh, Zucker, and that is just a couple of players showed up today not feeling well, and uh, Greenberg was in and out of the lineup, and that's been the story with Ed Zucker in the second game of the doubleheader for the Scarlet Knights. This is Zucker with it here. Not able to go at long stretches. It's tough to get into the flow of the ball game when that's the case. And when your teammates get used to a certain type of play and direction, uh, it's, it hurts. Listen, I think they have what my 15-month-old uh, son has, but I'm sure these guys are able to sleep through the night. You know what I mean? <laughs> Did you have to get up a last rough, night? Rough night. 10.55 to play, 34-24. Ellerby, Rutgers needs a hoop as Temple has opened up to a 10-point lead, their largest lead. Ranger Hall's rebound, and it's Blackwell. Long from McLaughlin. Nice pass inside. That should be oh. goaltending. But anyway, Charles Rain on a second step. John Chaney out of control on the sideline saying, come on, where's the call? There's no doubt about it. Should have been a goaltending call. But Rain, give him credit. He didn't argue. He stayed with it. And he knocked it in on his second attempt. And now John Chaney is uh, going to discuss it with Lou Moser, Jim Huggard, and Art McDonald, the three referees working this Atlantic 10 game, right in front of us, the discussion, and you'll be able to take a look at it. All right, now, this one was missed, but you have to give the officials credit. 99% uh, of the time, they've got it. Now, here's the, the ball up in the air. And that's Perry. It's tipped right there on its downward flight. So that's goaltending. But I'll tell you, they make so many right calls, you only have to make a mistake. And... Uh, of course, with replay, it makes it all the more evident they don't have that benefit, the officials don't. So that one was missed. And of Charles Rain did stay right with it and made the field goal anyway, and it's a 12-point Temple lead. Uh, from a Temple standpoint, you can, how do you think John 
Cheney would have felt if this was like a tie game in the last seconds and a play like that occurred. Well, it's like what happened in the uh, NFC Championship game. Use of replays made a couple of calls that went against the San Francisco 49ers. Very, very questionable. And it's real easy to sit here and and many times, even without replay, frankly, we have a better look at it than the uh, officials. We're above the action. We don't have six, eight, six, nine guys, you know, blocking our view. And then, of course, you get to see it on the replay. But no question about it. Over the long haul, and we've we've called the refs wrong, and then the replays have showed that we're wrong. So it does work right. two ways. They do a super job. John Cheney now smiling about it. Again, he's leading 36-24, <laughs> and he make can him smile. smile. But I'll tell you what, Holy Cross had the big lead of about a dozen against LaSalle, and LaSalle came back and had the opportunity to tie in the final minutes. The free throws did not do so. Then Holy Cross pulled away in the final minute and a half and 185-74 in the opener of this doubleheader. So it's not over yet, but if the Scarlet Knights continue to make plays like that, it may be soon. Knights turn it over. It's Blackwell running. Stansbury to McLaughlin looking inside for Hall. Hall draws the foul on Bell. Andre Bell commits the personal foul. Granger is very strong inside. As you'll see here, he knows what to do with it. Look at foul number 44, Andre Bell. That's his third personal foul. Number 30. You know, he can put it on the floor effectively, Bill. A lot of big men, once they put it on the floor, they'll have it stolen from them or... They don't have the hands, really, to, to dribble inside. And, and in most cases, the coaches don't like the big men to put it on the floor. When you get it in that close, turn around with it and go right up. Ranger Hall, in his senior year at Clayton High School, led his team to a 26-3 record, and they won the New Jersey Group 1 Championship. Averaged 23 points, 21 rebounds as a high school senior at Clayton. And he's 4-4 four four from the free throw line in the second half. He has six points against the State University of Rutgers. State University of New Jersey, which is Rutgers. And uh, Scarlet Knights with a five-second violation as Andre Bell could not get the ball in bounds. It's 38 to 24 Temple, and the Owls on the verge, perhaps, of breaking it open. Although uh, we did say that in the first game, and again, LaSalle climbed right back in against Holy Cross. I think we have a foul call here. Let's check it out. Got a foul call, holding call against Jim McLaughlin. You know, I think there were two calls, but the foul call preceded the five-second violation in which Rutgers was unable to put the ball in play. Perhaps one of the reasons why Bell couldn't get it in bounds, McLaughlin was holding on to, uh, was it Brian Ellerby? Is Ellerby going to shoot the free throws? Riggins is going to shoot. Now, Rutgers, it is Riggins shooting free throws for uh, the Scarlet Knights. You might hear that name get a few calls tomorrow, by the way, Riggins. <laughs> Eric Riggins is a freshman for Rutgers out of Passaic, played his high school ball at Passaic Tech. That his first point of the afternoon. One of those six freshmen you mentioned getting playing time for the Scarlet Knights. He makes them both. 38-26, first points for Rutgers in almost five minutes. They trailed at 27-24, but Temple ran 11 straight points in just under five minutes. And Riggins' two free throws gets Rutgers off the schneid. Owls by a dozen. 9.45 left. Stansbury is short, but he's fouled. I like that, Jeremy. Those two free throws got Rutgers off the what? Schneid. Yeah, okay. He hangs nicely, doesn't he? Terrence Stansberry. Fourth foul on Brian Ellerby. Darren Campbell will replace Brian Ellerby. Ellerby sits down with six points. Terry makes that one. Ed Bill, Zucker to see checking you. back in for the Scarlet Knights, replacing Eric Riggins. Uh, don't know if he's got any Riggos Rangers here at the Palestra. Another pleasant afternoon of college basketball at the Palestra, which has, of course, is just an institution. Who is 40 to 26. Against the Temple pressure. 
Sam Randolph. And here is Steve Perry into the lane, short. Perry going after the missed shot. McLaughlin comes down with it. Long for Stansberry, hustling back nicely. Darren Campbell. Rutgers has a four on two. Here's Perry batted away by Blackwell. Randolph with it again. Some frantic end-to-end -end action. Ed Zucker trying to take it to the baseline. Goes to Bell inside. His shot is short, and it's Perry with the tip in. Well, look at that uh, hustle. Darren Campbell. It is 40 to 28 with 9.04 to play. Temple retains the possession. Stansbury from Blackwell. You know, Bill, uh, a great story that uh, correlates Rutgers in the Big Five. I'd like to sneak in here if I get a chance. Blackwell's missed Bell on the boards. Dick Lloyd, uh, one of your color analysts, was telling me the other night that his brother Bobby, one of the greatest players in the history of uh, Rutgers, almost went to Villanova, almost joined Jack Kraft at uh, the Mainline Institution, and with some of the great players that uh, Jack had at Villanova, you know, that would have been just something. Here's Campbell. Rutgers has some less than fond memories of Philadelphia, of course, right? The final four year, and they got to the spectrum with the undefeated record, and Michigan obliterated the Scarlet Knights. Well, just to make it to the final four yeah. is quite a distinction. Here's a look at that block shot. Ranger Hall rejecting Darren Campbell. Ed Zucker sits down again for Rutgers. Eric Riggins checking in. Campbell will go to the line. Got a lot of ball, but the foul call did go against Ranger Hall. Brian Ellerby's going to check back in for Rutgers, replacing Sam Randolph. Tom Young figuring even though Ellerby's got the four fouls, 8-14 left, you got to bring him on. You know, a lot of times up high, you'll see a spectacular block, but down low, uh, you see the defensive player giving the shooter the hip for pushing off, and that allows him to make that block. 40 to 30. And a reaching foul is going to go against Steve Perry. Rutgers over the limit. Ranger Hall will step to the line and shoot the one and one. Well, the Philadelphia Big Five uh, welcomes the New Jersey Network to the Palestra. And we've got a couple of more great games coming up uh, on NJN from the Palestra. Undefeated DePaul and St. Joseph's. Got North Carolina one and DePaul two in the country. By the way, Princeton takes it on the road and plays DePaul next Wednesday night. Paul's miss. We see DePaul and St. Joe's February 7th. Princeton going to DePaul, huh? Next Wednesday night. I'd like to say Happy New Year and good luck. Pete Carroll. There's not too many teams that are going to go out there and win. We'll see Pete against uh, the Penn Quakers, coached by Craig Littlepage, next Saturday night, live at 8, right here on New Jersey Network. Brian Ellerby will fire. Brian has eight on four field goals. 40-32. Listen, it's an eight-point ball game. Scarlet Knights with four straight points after falling down a dozen. Stansberry's open. He has 20. Seen some good guard play. Jam Godbolt, Steve Black in the opener, and Terrence Stansberry right here. And again, from the Rutgers' point of view, really unfortunate that John Battle is out with the knee injury suffered in the victory over Monmouth this past Monday night. John Battle averaging 32 points per game in four Atlantic 10 games, and uh, he'll be out for a while. Junior guard for Rutgers. Riggins at the line. You know, had Battle stayed healthy and maintained the pace, a truly outstanding player would not have made first team in all Atlantic 10. As you got to figure, Stansberry and Black. Troy Webster, another fine guard at GW. Well, there are some good ones in the league. Stansbury certainly will make uh, All-Atlantic 10, you'd think. 
Black should make uh, all Mac conference, I would think. Mac, yeah, I'm sorry. We've seen a lot of basketball games, right? So, of course, in the Mac. Steve Burt from the Mac, Iona, great guard. A lot of outstanding guards in the East. That's what I was trying to say. And you're quite accurate in that assessment. For many years, well, I have to be accurate in something. <laughs> Temple, LaSalle, and St. Joseph's played in the same conference. 42-33 with 7.14 to play. Riggins trying to uh, take it away from Granger Hall. Blackwell right at the midcourt line. Almost took it back court, and Granger Hall throws it down. Out the basket, and a foul. Darren Campbell signaling to the referee how about a technical for hanging on the rim, but you take a look at Granger Hall. And Here's the pass. Here's the power move uh, by Hall in the lane on the pass from Charles Rain. We alluded to this earlier, and uh, there's 7.01 left in the game. He proved me correct. That two-handed stuff. Foul on Bell was his fourth, so after not scoring in the first half, Granger Hall now has nine second-half points. Darren Campbell, he traveled. Well, it's got to be frustrating for a guy with as good a record as Tom I was Young. just going to say that, right. And to have to go through one of these years. But you're going to have them. You can't have a great team every year. As he told us during our halftime feature, if he had everybody healthy, you know, he felt this team could play and win some ball games. But he's really looking forward to next year when uh, all of his players return and Lloyd Moore will become eligible and he still has a scholarship to give. They were in the hunt. Tom wants a timeout, I believe, with Charles Smith, an all-Connecticut ball player at 6'10". Uh, being in the hunt doesn't help when the player opts to go elsewhere, but Rutgers was right in it, and uh, Smith did decide to go to Pitt. Villanova. Tom Young has a scholarship to give, and, uh, you know, if he if he can bring in a quality player and get Lloyd Moore to lose a few pounds, Rutgers could be very impressive next year. Villanova was also in that hunt for Charles Smith, and uh, speaking of uh, good basketball, by the way, Dallas Comagy's... Uh, a uh, great player from Philadelphia's Roman Catholic, who was recruited by both Villanova and LaSalle, went to DePaul, and he's one of the reasons the Blue Demons are undefeated. And they'll be here. Newark's Jerry McMillan, a guard for the Blue Demons. They'll both be here Tuesday, <laughs> February 7th. They'll all be here. As the St. Joseph's Hawks host the undefeated, number two ranked nationally Blue Demons at DePaul. It's Phillies night at the Palestra. Number 45, Tug McGraw will be here. The Fanatic will be here. Beautiful Phillies usherettes will be here. Here. Bill Perry will be here. The New Jersey Network will be here. And the first 1,000 fans receive a Phillies carry-all bag. And we'll have a special drawing at halftime of St. Joe DePaul for Phillies World Series VIP items. Maybe a Mike Schmidt bat. Tickets for all games at the Palestra and Spectrum are on sale at the Franklin Field Ticket Office Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And on Saturdays from 9 a.m. till noon. And those of you on the New Jersey Network listening to Dan Baker for the first time and saying, where have I heard that voice before? How about the uh, World Series when it came time to throw it to PA announcer at the vet? Dan Baker does the public address announcing at uh, Phillies baseball game, so I know who to call for tickets this season. That's right. right. <laughs> 6.41 to play. Owls lead it by a dozen, 45-33. Charles Rain at the free throw line. Just showing Bill my 1980 Phillies World Championship ring. I have on my Philadelphia right, they, Big Five watch. They didn't win it this past year, did they? <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Well, they did win the National League Championship. I'll take the World Series every year, and I think most uh, baseball fans in any home city would. Rain knocks them both down. He has 13 points with its largest lead at 47-33. So Rutgers did get within eight, had possession. Temple's opened it back up again. Zucker off the LRB misses. Hammered, no call. I think Stansberry got a lot of ball, but also a lot of body. Temple got away with one there. Tom Young with one of those classic, uh, I don't believe it, type expressions. Well, definitely some body back live a missed shot by the Scarlet Knights and Darren Campbell going to the boards and he was fouled 
This might be a makeup here, Bill. Campbell going to the boards, crashing through, trying to get that offensive follow. And uh, Terrence Stansbury looking very quizzically at the foul call, which should have been made on the previous play, and, and it is assessed on this shot by Campbell. Third foul on Stansbury. Just about to say that Darren Campbell is a 100% free throw shooter for the season because when he made two earlier in this half was his first trip to the line this season. He looks like a pretty good shooter. Rutgers fans will hear from him over the next three and a half seasons. And again, I'll tell you that Charles Rain, fouls on Steve Curry, Charles Rain done an exceptional job off the bench all day for the Temple Owls. And seven in the first half. Got uh, eight more in the second half and the chance to go to the line and complete the three-point play. Bill, you might remember yesterday we were talking about this game on the phone, preparing, and we were talking about Charles Rain and what he contributes coming off the bench in that six-man's role because uh, obviously he could be a starter for this Temple team. John Cheney likes to bring... Charles Rain off the bench, and Charles almost always makes a contribution. That'll be number four on Stansbury. Ed Zucker will go to the line. Rain has 16 points, and it's a 17-point Temple lead with 6.07 to play, 50 to 33. So it took a while before Temple able to assert themselves and open it up. But John Chaney's club has opened the daylight here. Well, I think Tom Young uh, used what only strategy he could to try to keep the game as close as it's been. And without that, if uh, Rutgers got into a racehorse game with Temple, I think the Owls could be up by considerably more than they are now. Randolph replaces Campbell for the Scarlet Knights. You have not seen the real Ed Zucker this afternoon. Again, he came into the ball game with some fever. He averages nine and a half a game. He now has four at 20 Thursday night at Duquesne. Uh, another freshman who Rutgers fans will be hearing lots of in the next three and a half years at Zucker. Out of Manalapan. Rain travels. Andrew Bell forcing him to take a walk and you get a look at Tom Young. You mentioned the frustration earlier. And, uh, you know, Tom looking up at the clock, saying that his club's down 15 with 5.50 to play. Bill, would I be putting you on the spot if I asked you what the best team in New Jersey college basketball is? Without a doubt. So I would say, no, you're not putting me on the spot. Without a doubt, it's St. Peter's this season. As Sarah Stansbury leaves, Ed Coe replaces him. 20 points for Stansbury. So let me uh, put you on the spot. Who's the top club in the Big Five? It's the team that's beating Rutgers yeah. right now, 50 to 35. Nova's coming. Nova lost to Notre Dame today, but they have some excellent personnel. Zucker's miss. St. Joe's on a given night, right? Well, I think the Big Five has some very good teams this year. We looked at the records earlier. Ranger Hall off the Blackwell miss. Washington win over St. Joseph's. Uh, they pushed the Hawks down a little bit in that Atlantic 10 standings, but before the day began, no member of the Philadelphia Big Five is worse than second in his conference. Rain is fouled by Perry, who does not like the call. Meanwhile, it was Hall at the other end getting the rebound, which started this break. And Temple wound up with a pretty good shot. And Granger Hall has had an outstanding second half after a goose egg in the first half. He has 11 points in the second half. He's done a job on the boards. And despite LaSalle losing the opener, I think they have great talent. Well, they unquestionably do. In fact, let's take a look at this. That's Ed Coe, the guard from Winston-Salem. Charles Rain fouled in the act of shooting. Now at the line for two free throws. That was my preseason choice to win the Big Five. So Temple has surprised you a little bit? Well, I, uh, I you didn't know picked about Temple Hall, right? second and Villanova third. 
and qualified my choice that if Granger Hall was healthy. And I think uh, Granger Hall not only has been healthy, but has played far more effectively than anyone that had any reason to hope. And for that reason, Temple has been to this point the best team in the Philadelphia Big Five in the 83-84 season. Randolph's jump will not go. The rebound to Rain and the foul on Eric Riggins. The shot clock is turned off as we now have four minutes and 29 seconds left to play. 53-35, Temple leads it. Randolph's miss. St. Joseph's has played very well this year in the Philadelphia Big Five. Even with their loss today to George Washington, down in our nation's capital, the Hawks still have a 10-4 record. Blackwell, it is blocked out of bounds by Riggins. Well, you mentioned earlier, and I think you were kidding that Rutgers may not top John Battle's average in Atlantic 10 games. Battle, who's out with the knee injury, averaging 32 points per game in Atlantic 10 action. Here we are with 420 to go. Temple's possession. Scarlet Knights only have 35 points. You were kidding, weren't you? Yes, I was kidding. I don't want to make wrong. any enemies of Rutgers. But you weren't far from wrong. And Granger Hall now has 13 second half points. Scarlet Knights in the second half only have 17 points. But Phil, that was also part of. Uh, Young strategy to keep the game the score down and hopefully allow Rutgers to man the game. McLaughlin, that's not his game on the offensive boards, but he was there that time. It's 57 35. was already undefeated in Atlantic 10 Conference play 6-0 coming in, so the Owls are going to run that unblemished record to 7-0 in league play. And 12-2 overall. Ellerby from way outside. Brian now has 10. He is the leading record scorer. currently has been voted the third best team in the East behind Georgetown and Boston College. And I don't really think that Boston College deserves to be rated ahead of Temple. All force, but it goes the Granger Hall show in the second half. 15 second half points and watch him lean and knock it in. Just about reaches average after not scoring in the first half. Granger Hall averages 17 and a half points per game. Andre Bell on the boards for the Scarlet Knights. Ellerby to Zucker. Zucker tied up. Number 23, Kevin Clifton, who just checked in, knocked it out of bounds. Scott Baggett, number 44, senior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, replaces Ranger Hall. Mark Peterson has checked in for Rutgers. Ranger Hall with 15 second-half points. Charles Rain jumped very high on that inbound pass and grabbed it with both hands. Got some new players on the floor for both clubs. Clifton from Darby, not to be confused with Kevin Darby, who must be from Clifton. Kevin uh, is a sophomore and played very effectively at times last year as a freshman when John Chaney's team was depleted by injuries. Steve Brown, number 14, a freshman from Trenton, played his high school ball in the forest and checks in. Brian Ellerby leaves. Sam Randolph leaves for Rutgers. Darren Campbell has come back in. Brian Ellerby sits down with five field goals, ten points, the only Rutgers player in double figures in this ballgame. Coe with the line. It is another good outside shooter in the Owls' backcourt. McLaughlin, Stansbury, and Blackwell are 
also very good shooters. 60 to 37. Temple, they have blown it open in the second half. Got a foul call on Baggett. Chris Remway is going to come back in for Rutgers. Over the last 12 minutes after Rutgers closed to 27-24 with 14 and a half minutes to play, Temple has outscored the Scarlet Knights 33 to 13. Away. You know, Bill, it can't happen unless it takes place in postseason play, but I would love to see Temple go up against one of the uh, top three in the Big East this season. Georgetown, Boston College, and St. John's. The Owls have already defeated Villanova this year, but traditionally uh, one of the best teams in the Big East. Well, you may see it in NCAA play. Derek Riggins, the field goal, is the first of the game. It's interesting too, Dan, how many regular season conference champions do not emerge from the tournament and win, and with that comes the automatic NCAA bid. Last year, it happened, and here's Baggett. Whoa! Okay, Scott Baggett, the crowd loves it. 6'7 senior from Cherry Hill, who plays very sparingly for Temple. Therefore, the big reaction is he gets a field goal. He had a big bucket in the, the Al's overtime victory against the St. Joe Hawks at the Spectrum before 12,890. Campbell's missed. Baggett picks it up off the floor. He's and taking over. Well, <laughs> the point is, you know, last year we saw two conferences today. We saw the MAC in the Atlantic 10. Last year in the MAC, as Blackwell throws it away, Iona won the regular season championship, but Fordham won the tournament. In the Atlantic 10, West Virginia won the regular season tournament, yet Temple came away in the tournament. So, uh, there's evidence that balance and parity has come to college basketball, and it's tough to go in as the team that's favored to win in the postseason tournament because everybody's shooting for you. That's correct. And I'll tell you one thing, West Virginia, I, I said it earlier, Bill, but they're going to be very tough to beat down there, no matter their season record. They're probably going to be a 500 club this year, but they've only lost two times in their last 52 games at home. Yeah, Rutgers is like 84 and 16 at the Rutgers Athletic Center no tournament there, but home court advantage is very important, and when a conference team gets to host a postseason tournament, boy, what an advantage that well, is. That's where the Atlantic 10 championships are next year at Rutgers. This year, they're at West Virginia, March 7th to the 10th. All right, 33 seconds to play. It is 62-39. Eric Riggins, way off. Number 11 is Steve Warfel, who has just checked in. Another Temple player who plays sparingly as John Cheney has cleared his bench. Number 10 is Mark Popolowski. And 14 is Dwight Forrester, who had a shot blocked. blocked there. Forrester wants it. He wants it bad. Ball's loose. But Scott Baggett's got it. I know the feeling, Dan. There were times in my youth when it was garbage time. I got the call. Listen, those are the only times I got in the games. <laughs> That's what I mean. So Rutgers blown out by Temple, a 62-39 final. As Temple runs its record to 12-2, and 7-0 and in league. Rutgers losing their third straight league game, although they did have a non-league win over 